Chuck Pollock and J.P. Butler courtside where the Bonnies have just wrapped up the number five seed in the Atlantic 10. J.P., they don't ask you so much how, they ask you how many. Bonna got its 19th win, got a very important 11th win in the conference. Now nailed down the number five seed, but it wasn't a pretty day. It, it, it wasn't just like these last couple of games, uh, you know, haven't been for the Bonnies, but you're right, they did find a way to get it done. There's some, some good certainly in this. Um, as we said, they lock up the number five seed, so we know that they'll be playing on Thursday afternoon at 2.30 against the number 12 seed, which very well might be UMass again, right, right. depending on what happens tonight. Uh, 19th win, that's only the fourth time since 1980 with at least that many in the regular season. 11 league wins. That actually ties for second most in program history. So there was certainly something to play for and they did get those things done today. Uh, but again, just really kind of another uninspiring effort. I mean, we we thought this had all the makings of maybe kind of a blowout easy game to end right. on, and that right. certainly was not the case. It was a game where you look at the stats and you say, how do they win? The two guards who are normally giving you 40, it took a bunch of free throws because Matt Mobley, and Jalen Adams combined for only three field goals, but it was enough. David Ando celebrating the, uh, well, his senior day, he got the bucket that really put them ahead for good, but yep. it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't a great performance. No, I mean, if uh, we talked about it, if, if you'd said before the game that uh, Adams and Mobley were going to combine for three field goals, they were going to shoot 30, whatever percent they did for the game, uh, sort of get uh, owned in the paint I I as much as they did and still come out of here with a victory, um, you know, you might not have believed that, but they were playing one of the few teams in the league that I think um, that you could play like that and still come out with a win. There are a lot of other teams that if they if they had that same kind of performance today, they would be walking out of here with a loss on senior day uh, and, and not, you know, knowing until tonight what seed they'd be in Pittsburgh, um, but they did just enough against a team that really had been struggling, didn't have a whole lot to play for. UMass had won just two of their last 10 or 11 games, uh, but certainly gave Bonna everything it, it, it wanted tonight. I'm thinking that, yeah, it had been nice to be number four and draw that double bye, but I, we've seen enough examples where a team that draws that bye comes in and comes in flat when it gets to finally play. In Bonna's case, it's gonna be playing a team against which it'll be favored. Maybe that maybe that kind of helps. I mean, it, it could figure that, uh, you know, whoever they end up playing, whether it's UMass or Duquesne, will give them an opportunity to get a win under their belts to start the tournament. And then it's just a kind of thing of, you know, we'll see what happens from here. Now, Bonna is a team, you know, that we've seen is good enough to get it going when, when Adams and Mobley are playing well. They can play with anybody in the league. We saw, you know, here against VCU, they should have won that game. On the road at Dayton, you know, they almost won that game. So we've seen they can play with the league's elite, but they're going to have to be much, much better than they've been in these last four games. You know, last week, Duquesne, double digit favorite, comes on the very end. Today against UMass, the same thing. Kind of an uninspiring effort uh, on Tuesday against Davidson they're going to have to be much better than they've been down the stretch here if they're going to make any noise in Pittsburgh. That wraps up the home season for St. Bonaventure. Next up, the Atlantic 10 Tournament.